Travis Fever from Coheed and Cambria. We're with Premier Guitar right now on the Big Five. Looking forward to answering these questions. What's my favorite guitar? Well, I can answer that question, but I won't be able to show that guitar, except I did print out which one it is. Unfortunately, we were touring for the past month and all the gear went into a storage unit in Brooklyn and I am in Nyack, New York right now. So my favorite guitar, this Gibson Gold Top, it was actually a 2010 Gold Top. They, it was called the Traditional um, and I put a Bigsby on it. And I got that guitar when I was actually getting, and this is hilarious because obviously I do not own, because <laughs> you can see the little, I took this off the internet, but this was the best way I could show it. I was getting this Black Beauty, which I had always wanted. Since I was a kid, I always wanted a Black Beauty and I wanted to put the Coheed keywork on it. So if you look closely, you can see that the Coheed keywork is in there. And it's actually, they, they custom made this for me and that is up in that body. Everybody thinks it's a decal, but it's not. So I got this guitar made and I was super excited to have it made. And Gibson was feeling super generous at the time. And I got that for cost. And they said, we will, we will also give you a guitar. And I always wanted a gold top. So I thought, you know, this traditional gold top, I had played it a little bit. It felt good. It sounded great. So basically what happened is this throw in guitar that I got turned into the guitar that's been on every record that I have played on since and primarily is what I use. What stood out about the gold top for me, um, and it's nothing against that Black Beauty is still, uh, it's made it onto records as well, um, but what stood out was also a, a comfort level um, on the neck and also just I, sometimes you just there's just the slightest difference on on the fretboard that you, you can't explain it you know it might be the same exact guitar next to it but there's something about that guitar that felt so comfortable to play that's first that's foremost but second how it sounded i mean i plugged that thing in dry and there's just something about it i'm not sure you know it's super heavy it's super thick it's the heaviest guitar i've ever owned um and I know a lot of people, I mean, I'm not a gearhead where I could go, it's because of the certain wood, you know, I can't tell you exactly why it sounds as good as it does, but it's it just like, you know, whenever I'm looking for a certain sound, I'll go back and forth from numerous guitars, and I usually end up coming back to that one. If I'm looking for that beefy, you know, Gibson sound, or it even has a really nice beefy clean sound, you know, it's just, it's a go-to for me. It's like turned into my sound, you know? I had not fallen in love with it completely until I put that big on. And I think that happens with a lot of guitars and sometimes it makes me realize if I'm not going to be falling in love. I'm a massive Neil Young fan. I have been since I was a kid. It's the same way most kids pick up either a Les Paul or an SG. They pick up a Les Paul because they love Jimmy Page or Mick Ronson. They pick up an SG because they love Tony Iommi or, you know, I, wanted a, a Les Paul with a Bigsby, you know, and I didn't know what the fuck that meant, but I was gonna figure it out. And so I have I have been putting Bigsby's on since the day I could. The true test is once I put that Bigsby on, then I know. But back to this, sorry, I'll use the picture. Back to this, there, this doesn't need a Bigsby. This one, I, and I, this is like my go-to guitar that doesn't have one. I, I hate to say it, but that shallow part of it too is, is, you know, how it feels and looks also can give you some um, confidence. Confidence as a player, you know? I mean, it sounds so stupid, and she, but it's true to me. I feel like you get confidence from, if you feel like you have a guitar that you uh, are proud of, of what it looks like. And, you know, I had a funny guitar that I was given when I was younger, and I use it for another project that I have that's like, you know, kind of like tongue in cheek. And it was, it was a, it was a Dean Budweiser guitar. And, you know, okay, you're gonna know that that doesn't sound amazing, but at the same time, even like just holding it, I'm like, ugh, you know, it just doesn't, I don't, I don't think if it, it sounded better than any of the guitars we're talking about right now, I could still back it. Cause it just doesn't 
it doesn't have that attractive kind of thing. Usually, you know, I would come up with something that's really, you know, kind of like a deep cut. I'm not going to do that. Like I, I would have to say that if I got stuck on a desert island, I want to be stuck with Abbey Road by the Beatles. I had a little Fisher Price cassette player when I was a kid. Um, and I would carry that thing around at the age of four or five. And the first album that I fell in love with that I got from my father and or mother, either one, um, was a cassette of Abbey Road. And I loved Octopus's Garden, of course, first. You know, I'm a four-year-old, five-year-old. Up till like five or six, I would even use that to record things off of the radio or television that I liked certain songs, you know, and I would just press record and get the songs I wanted. But I had three mainstay tapes that I carried around all the time. And Abbey Road was always the one. So I always had that one. But I also had Synchronicity and I had Christopher Cross sailing. Those were my three favorite records as this little kid. But Abbey Road, you know, and I thought about it. I was like, well, would I say synchronicity? I mean, that's that's up there. But Abbey Road has like all these different sounds that they that they pioneered back then and have been important to projects and bands, especially Coheed, that I've been part of now. I mean, you even take the end movements, you know, like like from from you never give me your money on and you know and polythene pam and and how all these songs like you know are, are coming together and like you know conceptually and i've heard I've, I've watched all the documentaries i know that those were just songs that they had bits of that they wanted to piece together but as a child it was like there was a story there there was this undeniable concept and i think most people felt that way with that record and so from a young age that record just was that important to me. And I feel like it has all the elements that I would want to hear on that desert island until I eventually jump in the water and drown myself. Because how long can you be on that fucking desert island alone? One of my biggest guitar culture pet peeves is pick sweeping. I guess that fits into the world of, of super speedy shred style. Like, I, uh, it's just not me. Um, and it never has been. And Perhaps, and I'd be the first one to say, maybe it comes out of a little jealousy that I just, I, it's not part of my fucking DNA. I just don't think it sounds good. Sometimes it's used well uh, in certain things. I mean, like I was a massive Van Halen fan as a kid and I wouldn't ever say that he, you know, he didn't have that style as much as per se, a lot of the virtuoso guitar players that we grew up to. And it's become more utilized in music now um in rock music and stuff and in metal and it goes it ebbs and all ebbs and flows constantly like you know like a lot of um a lot of your classic rock kind of sounding you know what the blues pentatonic kind of shit you know that that stuff gets used you know more often than than anything else and it always comes back around but i kind of get lost when technicality becomes the most important thing and i know that i'm in a band where we're not like shy from being technical, but we're only doing it when we think it sounds really good, you know, and it's cool and it's what we like. Um, but I've never been a person who could really uh, fall in love with that sound. And like I said, maybe it's jealousy. I'm just, I am not ever and have not ever been a, a person who can do a lot of those maneuvers. It's just not, I feel like I just fucking, yeah, I suck. <laughs> maybe sometimes i listen to that stuff and it's kind of like a scoffing like fuck you you know like, but uh but regardless however it comes about whether it's insecurity or i still just don't like it a guitar hero that that i've had since i was much younger that may surprise people is leonard cohen as much as you would consider him to be just more of a poet songwriter he was an incredible finger pick uh, you know, virtuoso finger picking sometimes, but he had these incredibly innovative and interesting finger picking patterns that he would create with a lot of his songs. So discussing Leonard Cohen actually leads into the next question, which is what secret weapon I may have. Um, and I think the finger picking is definitely my top secret weapon, if not 
in the top uh, two because I don't think I have that many. I, I think the other one is is really just having a, a good sense of of melody, an interesting melody that that um, that a song may may deserve to make it better. Like for a song, like we had a, a, a co-ed song. Um, it's actually more of an interlude, but it was called The Fall of House Atlantic. That kind of thing. And utilizing all, I don't utilize the pinky as much ever, but utilizing all four of these fingers to make patterns. And it's a pretty usual go-to. And I've used that in, in a couple of different bands that I've been involved in, Coed being one, but even like, you know, there was a song called Dark Side of Me that we had. And that was a song that I remember just trying to work out a pattern and, uh, and, and everybody was kind of like, well, maybe that could be turned, you know, turned into a song and Claudio started writing to it and took it and turned it into what it is. Um, but that's been one of my hidden kind of, I guess, not secret, because I, I overuse the first pattern all the fucking time. But if it works, like it, it really works. Um, but uh, when I could come up with something that's interesting, that's even if it's a simple finger picking pattern, I feel like it adds a different texture, especially if it's a heavy song. That's kind of my own thing that I have. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm like extremely great at it, but I feel like I could dig into the toolbox and and find some cool stuff to add to songs with with uh, finger picking, where some people they wouldn't go to that at first, you know. Um, I'm definitely like a you know a lot of leads and stuff that I play. I've always leaned more towards the classic rock kind of thing, and in in the early days of Coheed, you know, um, it wasn't especially where we were coming from through a lot of punk and hardcore shows and and you know um even playing with certain indie bands and stuff it wasn't as utilized utilized as much to go to that classic rock kind of sound well you know you, you're now like basically utilizing any of that it's like i'm whispering at a construction site because everybody's fucking you know especially in the the mid 2000s to you know on like there was a resurgence of a lot of classic rock sound and you know and the the whole prog world but i think that with coheed we've always kind of stood out because we we try we're not afraid to try really strange things so in i try and play on um what my i play on what my strengths can do okay because there's plenty of weaknesses but when it comes to guitar or writing melodies in general however they're going to come about that's, that's, you know, what I try and play on. How am I going to make it so this melody really is interesting and matters and helps the song? You know, I think that's the one benefit I have as a guitar player. Um, and sometimes I don't do great with it, but for the most part, if I'm really roped into what the song is and I feel it, then I'm gonna find melodies that favor it. Um, that doesn't mean sometimes I don't fail miserably, but hey man, I try.